Well, welcome back to another episode of the Forest Mill. Um, I uh, one of my earlier instruments I built was uh, something I called a ukulele, and uh, this one right here I built back in um, probably 2000. This was one of my first prototype models, and the whole I, the whole concept I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to build a ukulele that looked like a lute because you know i used to always go to see these medieval reenactors and because i was in a group called society for creative anachronism and they the minstrels would would be playing up there but they've been playing with modern guitars and i'm like you know that kind of takes away from the 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 thing you know and they had medieval guitars but but you know not not dreadnoughts so i came up with this concept this is basically the body of a loop but with the strings and the uh, fret scale of a uh, uh, concert ukulele. Now the neck, I, the, the peg and all that, I did like an old early lute. And this, was, this was a very, very interesting build for its time. Very, very, very interesting build. I had a lot of fun with this this one. Um, you know, my dog has fleas is the thing. It's got nice sound to it. See if I can do it a little bit more justice. It's got a really good uh, sound to it. I have really big hands, and so in the later models when I built, I built a bigger uh, neck and uh, more space between the strings. Difficult for people with small hands, but easier with people who's got big snicker bars like I got. I'm a big dude. I'm I'm like 6'1", 260 pounds, and my hands are the size of mallets. So I mean, it, it's you know Anyway, this is a little lily, and hey, let's build one. I got some scrap wood. Um, this was actually scrap wood. This is this is uh, poplar wood. I love poplar wood, man. People dog on poplar wood, but I love poplar. Poplar wood is easy to work with. It's uh, I know it's one of the softer of the hardwoods, but you know it doesn't dull out your tools as fast. It will hold. Um, it will hold. You know, it will keep its place. It's not as good as maple and all that, but you know. Uh, this is Cedar Soundboard, uh, the little decal right here, I think I got that from one of the stores and, and countersunk it in. Uh, I had to come up with my own little, um, my own little bridge right here, because I couldn't get the loop bridges to actually work. But, uh, it's held, you know, it's, it's held, <laughs> held for 20 years, so I mean, it's doing alright. It's doing pretty good. I lost a fret right here. One of my frets came out. Um, that it came out or I took it out. I might have took it out because it's the buzzing. But uh, anyhow, I love this little loot, man. Anybody is a Ultima fan of the old Ultima games? That stones. Anyway, let me put this thing down and let's build one. Like I said, this is going to be one of the smaller ones. Uh, we're working with a piece of, uh, this is seven inches and right at about a quarter. And we're looking at about uh, 12 inches and almost a quarter. So, 
gonna be perfect. We got our piece of wood, y'all. I can get me a better recording system. Uh, all right, I already got a little template I made a long time ago uh, for these. And basically, here's the body. It's kind of uh, baritone loop shaped. It's going to have a, a notch in the front. So when we go to countersink, we can countersink the neck into that. And it'll hold real good. Because the worst thing you want to do is build something then the neck break. Done that in my earlier days when I was building instruments. And we're putting that on there. I can get it centered the best we can. There's a little bit of extra in the front. That's all right. We just want to get it centered the best we can. I'm going to go ahead and trace out the pattern. Windy outside, man. We got a, a cold front coming through. I'm here in Louisiana, and uh, you know we really we we've had a couple weeks of cold, man, but we ain't really had a winter this year, and that's bad news, man, because that means like the horse flies and the mosquitoes and ticks are going to be outrageous come summer. Make sure my music's low because I don't want you know artists to be crying. It can't copy right in front of me. Rock here. So there we go. We got our basic uh, line traced out. Woo, Wendy. That's going to be our neck lock. That's gonna be our, our end stop. So we got we got our neck block already marked out right here. We got our end stop. Basically, we just need to um, go ahead and do our um, give about easily do about a quarter of an inch for the walls. You gotta be perfect. We're not building the um, we're not building a thousand dollar loot, so I tried. Oh man, back in the day I tried uh, um, I tried the skill where you have the neck block and you have the end block and you take the ribs and you and you yeah you know, the ribs are about one eight inch thick and you bend them and and glue them and shave them and that just I couldn't master it I couldn't master the bowl of an actual loot I might try again one day soon since I I think my woodworking skills have progressed um, you know they I've gotten better at stuff but you know I, I don't think I've got that good. Them guys who sit there and do that by hand, man, they are truly masters of the art, and I am not a master. I'm just a, I'm just a Cajun in a woodshed building, building homemade instruments, and that's all right. I can live with that. All right, so we got it marked out right here gonna be like I said that's gonna be the neck piece this is gonna be the end piece uh, all this all this in here will cut out that can be a very thick loop but I don't have I don't have no I'd like to have I'd like to have a full inch board but I use what I got on hand next we got like a little I got one of the little hobby boards um, and I got the center marked out on it. I got a little template for uh, um, um, for one of the smaller 
ukulele neck. And uh, since this is a smaller instrument, we're going to mark it, get it on the little template right there where I got my center lines. And we'll mark out our neck. All we need to do is just mark out our ends right here. Just get our ends marked out. traced out there um, let's check square on that front right there sometimes I got a bad habit of not squaring stuff up bad habit of not squaring stuff up <clears throat> all right well that's square centered and square with what we want all right All we do is add our joint back here, and our our um, our, our um, end piece. When we do our end piece, I'm not going to do it direct down like that. When I'm going to do it at an angle, more like a degree, like that. So that way, when you're running your hands up and down playing the frets, because I found out when I did exactly like that, that uh, uh, I kept hitting the the, the end piece. Wind's getting crazy. Go ahead and cut this off right here and here. Um, leaving a little bit on the front right here for the uh, the the nut to extend. We'll run the nut about right here, but the the uh, the part where the um, tuners will go is going to be down here. We're gonna leave these parts on right here because when I go to cut the uh, the joint and I put it down on the table saw it makes it a lot easier so leave it on here leave a little extra all right next we're gonna use the table saw we're gonna use it with a sled and um, you can see the blade down there and when I hold it up across I can cut out the little the little neck slot down there for the joint.
Well, I was jacking with the camera because the camera's aggravating me and not recording. And I cut on the inside instead of the outside on the neck joint, um, the, on the uh, actual fingerboard, uh, the neck joint. But I'm going to use this little piece right here and put in there and glue it down and sand it and fix that joint because that's what happens when you're not paying attention. Well, I'll plug that piece right there and um, we'll let that dry since I jacked that up and uh, we'll move on to the peg head piece down here.